I'm like the Ku Klux Klan's worst nightmare. <laughs> I'm gonna say that verse one more time. Sometimes I wonder why this well keeps getting worse as the day goes by. But the Lord has to read all the signs of the heaven, and you know it's coming in now. The mother's against the daughter, and the father's against the son. But keep on believing and pressing your way to the fire. small, I would be holding him and I'd give him the bottle so he wouldn't cry. And as soon as they would start singing or the organ would stop playing, he would stop and he would listen. He was real talented. <laughs> he always liked to sit way up front. How old were you when you sang that first time at the oh, church? Oh, I was 13. He was 13 years old. That was one of the proudest nights of my life <laughs> when he sang and he was 13 years old. And, right and the next day, everybody was asking me about it. Everybody. That's your grandson? That's your grandson? Oh. I was very proud. In fact, I'm still proud of him today. Oh. Well in your hand. I really love singing spirituals, hymns, um, traditional gospel songs. This is what I, since a child, I always wanted to go around the world singing these songs. And you have to love it in order to really put your whole heart in, in, in anything. I love this temple. You have Persians, you have Jews from North Africa. Sometimes you have Moroccan Jews come, um, Yemeni Jews uh, from different areas. And depending on who's the majority, that tradition sort of runs. So there's never one type of culture. And um, it's a lot of tradition. I love the melodies. I love the way the trope is read for and sung for the Torah. So it um, it shows a different face of Judaism, a different part of the culture that most people don't get to see. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> I was not raised Jewish. I am Jewish. And one of the problems you have with that with our area is that they can't seem to separate the two. Jewish means white. <laughs> I don't think anyone should have a monopoly on religion. 
someone's genealogy may go back 100 years, and someone's genealogy may go back 150 years, someone's knowledge of their Jewish roots may go back 200 years, but somewhere down the line, it's going to stop. Because can't nobody trace their history all the way back to Moses. I'm not a Jew to, to please the rabbinic courts. I'm a Jew to please God. We want to bring to you the inimitable, the incomparable, the spiritual Joshua Nelson. Let's give him a big hand. I discovered Mahalia Jackson at um, the age of eight. My grandmother had a uh, Mahalia Jackson Greatest Hits 
I immediately fell in love with her voice. It was just a very rich voice. Anytime I would get a little spanking or if I got in trouble, I would go put that album up on the uh, <clears throat> record player and cry myself to sleep. My grandfather used to come in and see me laying on the floor <clears throat> with the speakers to my ear. And I guess he said, what's wrong with this boy? Because <laughs> I never actually heard them play the, the records. And then as I got older, I would take my little allowance money and give it to my grandmother, and she would order it out off the television. And I would be so excited when it came. And the kids in the neighborhood, when they were listening to the pop singers of that day, I was listening to Mae Jackson. friends with her, um, our pianist, Edward Robinson. And he'll pull me aside after the concert and, say, and he'll be have tears in his eyes. I said, what are you crying about? He'll say, oh, you remind me so much of me. <laughs> my legs are growing feeble. Yes. And my eyes are growing Yes. Deep. I feel my God within me. Yes. Feel his power within me. Well, Joshua wanted me to play for him. And immediately when I saw him, I knew that it was something different, that the Lord had left him here with another Mahalia Jackson voice. K-A-T-J, a new country with Lori White, and that's how you know when you're in love. You did this on that tape, you said, you said. Martin Luther King, we would go to Atlanta and around freedom rallies. He said that voice come once in a millennium. I thought I would never in life hear a voice like Mahalia until Joshua, we went out to Joshua. Joshua had an assignment from upstairs. I was talking to some young people and they said, well, we, we don't need that song anymore because it's not important. And that's one of the problems we have with our young people today. They don't realize that the struggle is still on and that there's still ways and still paths to be gone through and roads to still be driven down. And I still sing this song because it has so much importance. The one day we will all, we'll all overcome. We'll all overcome one day. One of the things that came out of slavery was the ability to sing, was the ability to express yourself through the song, to say the things. Some of the songs meant things like, uh, how did you feel when you come out the wilderness? That meant that when they were coming out of the woods after having secret church meetings and things, uh, they understood that something had happened and to send the word out to the rest of the, so the songs and the various expressions and things came out of this type of thing. Joshua is keeping that alive. As the slaves moved up north, they um, immediately formed churches and they adopted the hymns, the hymn books, and they just added more or less more soul to the music. And a hymn like What a Friend We Have in Jesus would be sung in a, a white congregation more on this level. What a friend we have in Jesus Oh, our sins and griefs to bear Everything to God in 
African Americans did, they took the songs, they made them more soulful. <laughs> have a direct connection between the African Americans as well as the Hebrews because they talk about the 400 years of slave that's something that both hold in common so it's, it's very meaning meaningful coming from a Jewish background as well as an African American background and that's where Hebrews Jews and African Americans always connect when I was a little boy my mother would bring me, my brothers, and my sister to this uh, black Hebrew synagogue. The coolest Passover uh, ever. We would all be into this the temple. The tables would be spread, and all the kids and all the families would be sort of crunched into this little temple. They would actually have the lamb, the whole lamb, and it would be purchased by the community. Everybody would donate a certain amount of money, each family and they would roast it in the back of the temple all day long. And right before evening, all of us would be dressed in white. See, he is holy. You can't serve him except that you're holy. Holiness without no man ever gonna see the most high. He's holy. He had such an, like a Caribbean accent. He's a praise God, amen, bless God, amen, amen. Baruch, Shem, Kavot, Amen. And everyone just, just get all excited. And we would try to get home before uh, midnight. And uh, because that was the time the deaf angel would pass over. And we all wanted to be in our home, homes before the deaf angel passed over. You can and see we, the love. You, can, you, you, you don't see phoniness. You can see the realness. And I can truly say I love my brother for that. God bless you. And I hope you continue on. All right, thanks. We, we was young together coming into the temple. I've been here since I was a little baby. Seeing him at that young age, when, when young people at that age do different things, they ain't really dedicated to serving God. You know, it was a good, good inspiration, and it wasn't fake, it was for real. That I could say. Today the Sabbath, and I wouldn't lie, and that, that's the truth. Joshua was the third of six children. He was very eccentric, he was very dominating Joshua knew what he wanted. And I'm very proud of his accomplishments because it was a single parent home. Uh -huh. He wasn't a follower, he was always a leader, and he had a goal in mind to try to unite people, and I think that's what it's all about. Then nobody better not ever say the Jews cannot cook collard greens. <laughs> My mother was very, uh, essential to all of us keeping Judaism as a um, religion as well as a culture within our home. I remain Jewish because I love God and I believe that is my culture and I want, I'm doing this as a continuation because as a Jewish adult, this is what I believe I should be doing. But if it wasn't for that seed, the flower could never have blossomed. He brings a lot of healing to people with his singing. Well, when God sings, go marching in. Well, when the saints go marching in. Music is a powerful phenomenon that God has given to man to help alleviate anxieties and to help comfort one another with. When um, I play at the funeral parlor, there could be a family there grieving and mourning the loss of a dear loved one, and knowing that they'll never see that loved one again, what one song can do to uplift the person and make them feel just a little better. Jenny.
not tolerate people yelling and screaming and don't go over prayers that you know already. I don't know. I, I, I want you to do. work on prayers that you don't know. <laughs> what do you do? Now you need to learn this and you have to learn this. I remember when I was um, that age, 13, 14, struggling with Hebrew, so I can identify as most bar and bar mitzvah students, you know, or teachers can, and um, it's really fun working with them and watching them. Sometimes I can be kind of strict and look mean, but it's only for their benefit that they'll do well on their bar and bar mitzvah day. Who wants to lead the Shema? Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. I need someone to lead the Baruch Hu. Was that me or you? No, you stand up there. Make them do it. Yeah, we stand up there. Baruch Hu, Adonai. What I'm doing now is really what I like to do. I like singing, I like teaching Hebrew. Now downtown Newark at one time was just a flourishing populous city. I believe it had a population of about 500 or 600,000. In the 60s, after many upon the announcement that Dr. King had died and was shot and assassinated, many of the people went up and down the streets tearing up the shops and markets. They looted and rioted, and many of the Jewish population fled and went up to, to the suburbs. Newark, Detroit, a lot of cities are still just coming to grips with the effects of the, uh, the riots from the 60s. One bad thing I hate about what they do, um, cities that are on the verge of collapse and ruin, they make it look like the black people tear the city up when actually the city is already financially broke and um, blacks are moving in because many of the prop properties are affordable and they'll say that the blacks destroyed the town, destroyed the city. Before the riots came, Nork was already on a decline. It had nothing to do with the black people that were living in the city. It's a very rough life. People are struggling to make ends meet. The smile when you're happy. Oh, the smile when you're sad. The gospel songs take over a different part of my life, the black part. Where the Jewish, there are no Jewish songs about that, you know what I'm saying? Unless you're doing the spirituals. You know, Micha, Mocha, Bailey, Madonna, those are nice and cute and everything, but they have nothing to do with me walking down the street, getting stopped by a cop. So the gospel songs have a very political, social overtone. Calls very much. It surpasses the whole thing about religion and it goes to the spiritual realm about treating your neighbor right and people don't, not everyone grasps that concept. about You can be religious and be the meanest person in the world, you know. 
You can be spiritual, meaning you don't follow the relig the uh, ritual aspects of religion, but you actually carry out the main mor morals and ethics, and that's very important to everybody. If my mother hadn't instilled in us Jewish ethics and values as children, we would never be observing Pesach and Sukkot and keeping Shabbat holy and putting mezuzah on the doorposts. Okay, aren't you gonna lead it? You better make sure that fat piece is cooked. Tivano. Right to the bottom. Yeah, Tila. Yeah, dying. Yeah, damn. I mean. I mean. All right. Yepesach, hat asha'ata hacha, le shana haba be arba di Israel, hashata of de le shana haba abene horim. Amen. Ili was a yasa by him, masa by him shefati, masa by him shefati, him dayenu. Dadayenu, 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 dayenu, 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 dadayenu. Being spiritual and having a connection with God supersedes being Jewish, supersedes being Christian, supersedes being Islamic, supersedes tradition, supersedes culture. When you have a connection with God, it has nothing to do with your color, your background, where you are from. That connection is there. But the Jewish part just pulls it together and gives it more meaning. People have a problem with tradition. I have no problem with traditions because traditions is what hold families together, and hold communities together, and hold ethnic groups together. So it's great when you have a tradition like Passover. Oh, when Moses was down in a heat of land, oppressed oh, so hard he could not stand. The Lord opened a door so that we could be seen. The Lord and it's just the, the little conflict that comes from people's ignorance. Hate is through ignorance. You know, violence comes through ignorance. Racism comes through ignorance. I had to go to Israel. I had to learn my language and make sure everything was in order so that when my kids come about, they may not have the problems that may have faced me or my mother or my grandmother or great-grandmother or whatever. How are you? I am good, and you? I am going to shake hands. Hey. First time I came to Jerusalem was approximately 10 years ago. And um, I was about... 15 years old, and I came with a group from the temple, from Temple Sherry to Philo Israel. And um, when we entered Jerusalem, you know, we were, all of us were excited and everything. And as soon as we got to the, um, the Kotel, the outer limits of the, uh, the Western Wall, you could see the sun shining in and reflecting off of the dome. And um, immediately, just this rush of energy and of, I was just totally overwhelmed. And I just started crying, and, and it lasted for about a half an hour. It's just that you see, the, see it in the books, you read about it in the Torah, in the, uh, in the writings, and then you actually come to the place where it all took place, and it sort of dawns on you that this is not something that was made up, this actually really happened. I mean, and it's still a sense of um, uh, a special feeling that comes over me when I get to that area. You know that that's the area where God's presence was in that in the temple, the Beit Hamikdash, for so many years. Every year that I come, I still put my prayer in the uh, crevice of the wall.
songs are not supposed to be lively and Hebrew songs are not supposed to be joyous and everything has to be on a mourn, a mournful sound or a minor tone and it's not true. That's what inspired me to start teaching my choir Hebrew songs. And David, my favorite king of Israel, was known for dancing and jumping up and worshiping God and dancing before the ark. And at that time, it was suitable for the congregation to worship God with everything. It's to still be an act today. It's the same God, same way of worship. So I believe that it should be brought in to both services. Abraham means there's no other God like Ab like the God of Abraham. Yahshua means Joshua. 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 Jesus. Jesus. Where in the beginning they made a fuss. So like we don't know how to read Hebrew and we don't and I told him, I said, Well, I said, You you're gonna do it. You you do you can do anything you put your mind to doing. And um, had a couple of rehearsals and um, they mastered it after one or two tries. Like you're gonna hold it, but you're gonna hold it lightly, sort of. And most of the time when I'm going out to preach or minister in this area, he will go out and support me. He will play. He will sing. He don't have to do that, but he will. I don't care if I'm going to a small church or a big church. He's there. <laughs> <laughs> He's back, man. Yes. No, he has to do the smack thing. Ah. That's fine. Sick of you. I think he's one of not only New Jersey's best, but the world's best. I don't care how far he go, he always gonna find roughing somewhere. And that's, that, that's what counts. When people ask me how I, as a Jew, sing about Jesus, I answer them with, Jesus historically was a Jew. And much, much of the songs that I sing about are about life occurrences, historical life happenings. I never sing about Jesus in terms of being God or being equal to God. I always sing about songs about the happenings in the New Testament. And Jesus was a Jew. And I think a lot of uh, Jewish people are led astray by the notion that Jesus was not Jewish and that he was not a good Jew. He was a good Jew. Wait. 
Nukani Klapa, and uh, Nukani Danza, too, if you want. And uh, when you do the hand clap, it's Churches, you work up the people to a point of climax. It's different here. You have to put that out of your mind because they um, don't react the same way. <laughs> Swedes are not expressive people in general. So a lot of Scandinavian people are not expressive. So when they feel this, they don't know how to respond. So you have to say to an audience, Nukani Klapa, you can clap. Nukani Danta, you can dance, you can, and then they will respond after you tell them to, but they have no way of knowing what to do when they hear something they like because, you know, most people who went to church, they raised that when you're in church, you sit like this. singers, we all poor, we eating chicken in the morning, and we not eating nothing at night, just a little soup. So if you could buy a CD, I'll sign it for you, I'll kiss it for you, I'll bless it for you, i do anything for your CD that you want me to. Oh, okay, good. Kiss, bless, everything. feel something. Feeling small. Gospel music is a way of interpreting that, you know, relieving that anxiety. I went to a masseuse the other day and she uh, she was doing all this and it just all the tension went away and 
Gospel music has the same effect on people. When they leave, they leave feeling good. They feel better. They feel that they've come close to God. I'm a on your side. I want a big crescendo, so you say, ooh. Chat, yes, they do. Oh, yes, 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 they do. shout and God does not make you shout and I was saying that what happens is that when there is a spiritual thing going on you feel it inside and the feeling that you feel is, is the spirit of God I didn't I would think God would want us to be like he is. And if he's available to everyone, we should be too. 
I try to fit in that, you know, be, be, being Jewish, black, I work with the Christian people. The more people you bring together, the better the world will be. That's what I want to do. You know what I need? I need that um, apple juice. Yeah, I left it in the room. To get it. Mm -hmm. So I'll I can drink that. I like that better than water. Okay. <laughs> God, they're a typical Swedish audience out yeah. there. He's just sitting, oh, Lord. That's as good as it gets. <laughs> no, that's really... Oh, he got some apple juice. Oh. Y'all screwed me for two minutes. I got to think about prayer. <laughs> the Lord, Father, God, that's you allow me to sing the praise of our lesson, you. In the name of... <clears throat> Touch me that I may be able to touch those that are in the audience. Father God, let me not be seen, but let your, your will be done. Amen. Good luck. Thank you. What is that? you still me? Mm -hmm. on the way to Jay's. Okay. On the way to You're going to need him. You're going to need him. You're going to need him. At the wild. Well, he's a burden bearer. A hard regulator. A friend in trouble time. He's a great emancipator. You're going to need him. You're going to need him. You're going to need him. You gonna need him. You gonna need him. At the wild. Sing listen, it, listen, sing listen. it, Robbie. He's my shepherd. All right. And my guide. Mm -hmm. In a
Shot! 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 Shot!